YouTube, family, friends, and subscribers. We are having more Oregon sunshine. More rain. Should be a little slower. That way is anywhere from five to nine inches in the next three days. Right here, it's probably gonna be about four, four and a half. But then the snow level is going to come back down, so I don't think we'll get a whole lot of flooding. It is raining on top of snow at 3,500 feet, and there's a foot and a half up there, but it's cold enough, it's not melting real fast. And that's good news. So, we've got some good news here. I'm running the generator to charge the battery bank, and this inverter historically when it's charging batteries has gone into float mode too soon and one of the problems was that I didn't have a temperature probe so it was going into a default setting so Roy Amberg says you've got to get a temperature probe on there you don't have any idea what you're doing so we did that and that helped compensate the voltage and that also helped it to stay into absorb mode a little longer and right now it's in absorb mode the other thing I did is I returned the battery bank size pot down so that the return amps that it was looking for would be less obviously a larger bank it would see going into float with a larger return amp when you have a smaller battery bank obviously the amps are going to be less when it's fully charged so it uses that as an indicator for when it goes into uh, float mode. So turning this all the way down is cheating a little bit, making the inverter think uh, that it's not fully charged yet. So when the return amps are turned down, it fools it into keeping it into absorb mode a little longer. And the reason why I'm doing all this is when this inverter was designed, the thinking on L16 batteries were a different charge algorithm than what we understand today is better for them. So this solar charge controller um, has a different, different parameters than this one does. So actually when this one goes into float, the solar charge controller can put about another 25 amp hours into the battery bank. So my concern was that the batteries uh, weren't as charged as I would like them to be with the new parameters or, or the new algorithms that they have for these L16s. So I discovered something else and Roy if you're watching this one uh, this one was a no-brainer I don't know why I didn't figure it out. When the solar charge controller is on and even though it's gray skies I am putting out two or three amps and when the charge controller, solar charge controller is on, and since it goes to the same bus on the shunt for the battery monitor, the charge controller uh, attaches there as well as the inverter charger attaches there. So when the charge controller for the solar is putting two or three amps in, it, this inverter thinks, oh, well, everything's fine. I'm going to go into float. So what I've been doing on cloudy days is I've been turning the solar charge controller off so I don't have this artificial voltage going down to that shunt. And guess what? It stays in absorb mode longer. Let me show you how much longer. According to my battery monitor, I'm down a minus... 7.2 amp hours so I'm getting very close according to this I should be in absorb mode still now let's go ahead and look and see where the batteries actually are I'm at 99 percent so the fact that the inverter charger is still charging the batteries is really good news before when I had the solar charging at the same time the inverter charger would go into float mode when this was at 96 percent 
and I'd have another 40 more amp hours I was supposed to stick in the batteries and it wouldn't let me. So by turning the solar off, it's allowing me to charge the batteries all the way up with the inverter charger. So finally we have the, the uh, problem solved. It may have been understood all along that I had been turning my solar off while I was using my inverter charger. It's just something I didn't put together until now. So my amp hours, I'm down 6.9 and about every two seconds it goes down a, a hundredth, so 6.96, so 6.95, so about another 12-14 minutes and this thing should kick over into float. And when it does, I'll turn the generator off, I'll turn the solar back on, and even on a gray day like we have today, I'll have enough solar production to keep my batteries at 100% going into the evening hours. And that's what happened yesterday, and it worked great. So, problem solved. I need to turn my solar off while I'm using my inverter charger if I want the inverter charger to charge the batteries all the way. Now, most times, when I have more sun than I do, I but not enough to get a complete charge, what I would do is I would run my diesel generator and use the inverter charger to put 100 or 150 amp hours back into the battery bank, you know, bulk them good. And then when this starts flashing like it is now, it's in absorb mode, I turn the generator off and let the solar finish it out and I save a lot of diesel doing that. It's just too uh, too stormy today to do it that way. So the way we do it is we run the generator in the morning and then let what solar we have finish it off in the afternoon. Some people do it different than that but that's what works for us. Anyway, hope this helps somebody. Our dilemma is now solved and have a very blessed day.